Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, I've, um, I wanted to share this uh, CyberPuff is a 40 plus story with you because this is a personal story in many ways. And um, it's, it made a lot of sense to me. I thought it was a singular case and it turns out in the, in the last uh, few years in talking to uh, many of you uh, at conferences and gatherings and so on, um, I realized it's, it's really just a, another, um, another, just another story. So I'm, I'm pretty regular. Um, for the, the Powerpuff Girls, uh, this has been a thing of mine. At the end of the 1990s, uh, there was a show uh, called The Powerpuff Girls, and there were these three, sometimes four little girls uh, that went on and conquered the world and did uh, phenomenal things and beat monsters. And uh, they did all that while just being girls. And um, I encourage my students uh, to be those Powerpuff Girls and to succeed and to do uh, the impossible and uh, told them that it's it's okay it's uh, it's normal to be in uh, um, in inferior inferiority sometimes but that our skills and our perse uh, perseverance and our um, um, our determination would actually bring us through so fast forward to um, that being into the time when the feminism was really kicking in, uh, that made a real, real connection to me with what I was trying to do in uh, in my line of work. I started in education, and uh, I liked using all kind of um, uh, tools. And I soon figured out that um, those tools were unregulated. Those tools were new. Those companies that created those tools um, actually didn't. Um, uh, didn't know what the requirements were in education. They didn't really consider a lot of the requirements. So I started investigating and talking to companies and trying to resolve some things. And about 10 years ago, um, I was involved in a project. I had to create a project from nothing. And um, I, I was swept into this um, cybersecurity and privacy and so on because to me the two work uh, hand in hand especially in education and, um, I got familiar with the with the field but never really stepped foot into it fast forward a few years later 10 years later uh, in my 40s um, interested in uh, pursuing that because I really enjoyed uh, being part of it and uh, making a difference and creating something for um, for my students and for my teachers and um, just just making a difference. Looking in cybersecurity, um, we are apparently about 24% um, now. Uh, there is a debate between 20 and 24% of women being in cybersecurity. Uh, I think that the, there's a bit of confusion. I don't think everybody is really thinking about cybersecurity. Most of um, the people interviewed, out of which only a quarter were women, um, they may think that it is cybersecurity. Sometimes it may not be. Um, but we did make it to 24%, so we're just going to shoot with a, with a higher number. And um, yay, we made it. But let's look at the job vacancies. So right now, there are 53% of the jobs on the market vacant in um, in IT. So um, out of those 53%, uh, only 5% are um, occupied, are uh, taken by women. And if we look all over the world, globally, uh, there's a huge need of cybersecurity workforce in, uh, in all the countries and all over and all companies, institutions. 
which makes more uh, begs more of a of a question is where do the cyber pros come from? So let's take a look at first of all what kind of education do they need to have? And in um, the ISC 2s uh, report for 2020, the 2021 is actually being developed right now. Um, the most education, the majority um, of education that staff has is bachelor degrees and uh, master degrees uh, follow. So there are a lot of um, educated professionals in the field. Out of those, 44% uh, are millennials and about 39-ish are, um, are Gen X. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the Gen X are um, people over 35. So yay, we do have a presence. However, uh, in looking at what is that presence, we can see that it's actually um, majority from education institution graduates. So a lot of young people, which is amazing and it's very empowering for me as a teacher and as a um, participant in education and as an educator to see that uh, we are advancing these, these young people. But the topic of today is uh, what if you're not that kind of person? Uh, what if you are um, a career changer? And you can see here the career changers only amount to 23%. And um, those 23% out of those, it's probably only about 3 or 4% that are women um, that actually try to, to repurpose and move into, um, into cybersecurity. So the fun thing is... Uh, IAC3's report entitles the Women in Cybersecurity uh, Report with uh, young, educated, and ready to take charge. So I know that uh, this is a, a really powerful thing. We want our young people to be able to be in the workforce immediately and make a difference. And that's great. Um, education is so important and this is what I strive to do with my students as well but ready to take charge is um, is just something that applies to everybody so I'm just gonna look into how can we become ready to take charge since we can't become young anymore so the cyber workforce pay by age group is uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to look at we all know that there is a huge discrepancy in treatment and opportunities and training and of course in pay for uh, men versus women and uh, you can see uh, this is a, a little bit of an interpretation of the report at different age groups the millennials seem to have it a little bit better yay uh, but um, at generation x already the the gap widens and the boomers are already uh, way outside the, the work. So what can be done about that? Um, the general exception is that because there are issues with um, filling in the positions, because there is no um, certified professional workforce or professional workforce that can actually take, uh, take over and um, fill the job gap, there is a high interest in uh, building skills. So one of the items um, that I want to focus on today is how do you build skills or do you already have them? And how do you build on the skills that you already have? So one of the um, reports that I was looking at recently was um, one of the tripwire reports. The respondents in totality, so everybody said, they consider the soft skills to be important in uh, hiring for a security team. And um, some actually went as far as saying those are more important, the soft skills are more important than the hard skills, which is the technical skills. I don't know that I would go that far. If you do go into the technical part of cybersecurity, so not into the project management and so on, uh, and organizational you, you really want to, to know what you're doing and those technical skills are very important, but they are probably equally important as the soft skills. Another thing um, that's been tried to do is expand the experience of newly graduates. 
So anybody graduating from college with internships or work study or apprenticeships or some form of on the job experience. So my thinking was, well, and I do that in my institution today, um, what if companies and institutions would actually encourage um, on the job for everybody who comes in? So just, you know, hiring them at whatever, a lower grade and allowing them and just putting them on a path of certification. So that would be an, an incredible thing uh, to actually build from inside and retain that workforce. So the conundrum is you have all of these educated people who come um, from um, college, but they lack in soft skills. And then on the other side, you have all of these um mature professionals who would like to switch over. They have the soft skill, but they don't really have the uh, the technical skill or much of the knowledge. So what do we do about that? Well, this is where the seasoned professional from any other field comes in. And um, this is how anybody who is interested in uh, moving into cybersecurity can, can proceed. What does that mean? Because everybody's saying, well, yeah, it's easy for you to say you've been dabbling in this and you know you had the opportunities yes and no um dabbling is how you start uh you start with what you bring to the table you have to know who you are you have transferable skills you have your life experience which is probably the most important thing that you're bringing to the table uh you have soft skills which are again crucial to the job and you have your superpower uh, mothering, I say that mothering is a superpower because um, if you have a child or more, uh, you know that parenting is a job in itself. And balancing that with all of the activities that come with the children um, is another job in itself. And then to add to that your own professional career or work interests or passions. Uh, those become other things. So somehow we just make that possible. We do raise wonderful children. We do prepare them for the future. And we do try to pursue our dreams when the time comes. So when we're ready to return and so on. So those are your superpowers, your organization skills and your determination and your willingness to make something happen are important. And then there's your passion. So I know there has been a lot of talk about the big money that's being made in IT, um, and it's wonderful. And I think um, a lot of people do look at the the finance factor too. I really believe it's the passion that makes us go and switch a career. Because for me, for example, when I started having issues with um, various applications that didn't play with each other, uh, I had to really go deep into what is really technically happening and why do my IT people not handle it? And it was because they didn't know how and that was just not okay for me to just stop my project because there's no knowledge. So I started researching on my own and that was because I was interested in resolving the issue. And then it became interesting to see what is happening in the background and why do things um happen a certain way. So making those connections are fueled by your own passion. So I've made a list of transferable skills uh, in talking to peers, to women my age, older and so on. And by the way, I had a tweet that was super awesome today. Uh, will any of this help people over 60? Yes, this should help anybody at any age, not just um, 40, 40 plus, not just um, you know, graduates and so on. This is applicable to all levels, to all ages. So I'm just going to do um, just a little sweep through what I feel that has helped me the most um, is creativity and problem solving. We bring those with us. As women, we are somehow naturally inclined to uh, creatively problem solve, to make something out of nothing, to figure things out, to jump through hoops, to uh, bypass hurdles. Uh, so I guess you can say that that is our analytical reasoning helping us do that. 
the other thing that I feel is very important to bring with you when you move into a cybersecurity um, career is patience. Uh, systems, they are zeros and ones and they don't play well with people. So you do have to bring all of your, all of your patients. Also systems are um, departmentalized and they live in silos. So the people who are in charge of them and whom you need to work with very closely will have their own way of doing things, which you already know from working in any other job, uh, working inter, you know, intradepartmentally. So you will bring that patience with you uh, that will serve you probably the best. Uh, forecasting, what can happen if, so the what ifs, I'm an educator. So in my life, the what ifs were uh, always present. So it's really interesting to uh, to see everybody that I'm working with already know that during a meeting or um, during a, a crisis or a problem that we're trying to solve, I would just open my mouth to say it and they would say, but what if, before I even get to say it? Because that is the... Uh, the possibility, the forecasting. Okay, so if this happens, then you can have options A, B, C, D. How does that uh, develop? Well, again, going back to being women and going through life for a number of years, we learn to forecast what could happen because we want to have a plan. So planning is another um, important skill that we bring with us. So these are all transferable skills. The soft skills that we bring with us that are probably the most important because especially in IT, uh, more so in cybersecurity, communication and collaboration are vital. Uh, those are so valued by everybody in, uh, in all the companies and management and so on because no system will work unless everybody participates, understands, and collaborates. So being able to collaborate and talk to uh, everybody, to the people involved is super important. And I feel that this is something that needs to go on your resume with examples of mediating groups or um, creating ways for communication improvements or collaboration or um, teamwork. Another thing that's very important to list is the leadership. So we lead every day. And I'm saying we as in we humans, not we women alone. So everybody's a leader every day. We make decisions sometimes um, on behalf of groups. Sometimes we um, don't even make the decision, we make the suggestions. Sometimes we serve and we are the servant leader that leads by example. So all of those ways that we lead, um, it, this is something that you really want to think about in how your career can be impacted by. And then adaptability. So being a mom, for me, it was um, very interesting to observe myself move from my life has to be this way and this is our daily schedule. And uh, I work from this hour to this hour to having uh, children and having a high responsibility of work and having to be on call sometimes at all odd hours and then figuring out how to do everything and still have. So eating my cake and having it too. Uh, this is something that we do as parents this is something that um, I think um, we need to, to emphasize as our soft skills. Uh, another thing that I would like to point out is the curiosity. This is something that um, we do as women. We have curiosity. We want to learn. We are naturally um, endowed with this desire to see how things work, to um, improve, to do better. And well, the more you work, and I like that comment, the more you work, the more um, you have to uh, compromise your life balance. And I agree partly with that, 
but maybe not so much because here's this is again we're going back to why at 40 plus by 40 plus you already kind of know what you want to be when you grow up so uh, you know what you're willing the time that you're willing to put in and um, the amount of effort that you want to put in and how your family is fitting into that and um, there's there's a lot of you that makes the decision more than the job making the decision for you so in any career so switching over and making uh, sure you understand what that life balance is for you it's very important so uh, the other thing that we bring to the table is the passion so for me personally, and I want to share this because I've heard it so many times and I thought, oh, here I am, you know, struggling to, to do this thing and being a woman in a man's field and it's just so, um, you know, hard to do everything and be a parent and be successful and still have a, you know, like a life an adult life and just managing everything and what kept me was my passion and this passion I thought oh you know this is what brings me and makes me you know makes me tick makes me roll makes me go well it turns out that I'm so not unique in that and it was so disappointing and so reassuring and so such a breath of fresh air to see you don't you don't need to uh, know how to do everything on your own because everybody else around you has the same passion they are there because they want to I, and by everybody i mean everybody who's struggling like you so i really like um getting into networking groups and talking with you now or talking in um in any kind of group uh because what I feel it's the most important is actually the passion that keeps you going and commiserating with somebody else who goes through the same thing with you is really powerful. That really builds something and it's um, really allowing you as a person to come to terms with who you are and kind of try to, to understand, okay, well, this is my support group we can build together. Um, I don't care who they are. They don't care who I am. We just do this because we want to. So this is, again, this is the bigger thing about uh, passion for me. And um, what do you do with your passion? What do you do with a need? What do you do with um, your struggles and so on? So anybody who's wanting to move, and again, this is for, um, those of us who are at a certain age when we are mature and we are um i'm just gonna say ready to be um more than what we are right now um what do you do practically because all of this is very i've been always told you're such a dreamer why why do you even bother you know it's it's so hard to make it it's so hard to to just you know in insert yourself into this career and um it's just something that you have to do at your own pace so for that um my personal example i'm a single parent um I'm a woman in a very masculine uh, environment. Um, I've had to upward manage a lot, but at the same time, I had to learn a lot. And because I'm a single parent, because it's not always easy um, to get the knowledge and so on, I have been blessed with a lot of mentors that were um, willing and men or women that were willing to to talk with me and uh just just open themselves to questions and uh show me around and give me pointers and so on but um training free training for me was very important and free being the word 
Uh, there are a lot of programs, including in my institution, that are really great, and they really do prepare you for all kind of careers at any age. So that's you know just not the something just for young people. But I don't have the time nor the finances to do that. So this free training is online. That's the good part about it. Uh, most of it comes with uh, certification pathways. Um, most of it is very official. So just having the fact that you did the training on your um, uh, resume is probably, you know, a good pointer, a good start. But just going through this training, and uh, my favorite one is Cybery. I've used it with my students in uh, high school. I use this with my students in higher ed. Uh, I feel it's phenomenal. We do have people who try to certify um, professionals from the field. I'm uh, in the backyard of NASA, so you know I have a lot of the the security people coming in and training and so on. So I do recommend that. Um, to everybody, uh, the cyber IT, but then cyber aces is also a good one. And one of my favorite is um, Sans, um, Sans, or however it's uh, is pronounced. I really, really, really like it because um, I've worked with Sans before. Uh, they have a very rigorous methodology to their training, so it's easy to understand, easy to follow, easy to apply. So. Um, uh, I see somebody's transferring, transferring skills there, Julie. Um, one thing that I would like to, to bring to you is all of us have power in numbers. So on our own, we're just a woman or just an IT security person or just the project manager. But through means like this, like the Diana Initiative and the WISIS and so on, other organizations that I actually have, um, we can influence. And this comes from um, being able to, uh, to project. How do you project? So as a teacher, I have to give you this example because it's probably the easiest way to, to explain it. As a teacher, I had a, a huge class of 30 plus up to about 50 students in, in one room. And those students would come in various abilities. And um, those students would also have their own personalities. So think of it now, apply that to your um, IT and companies and structure dynamics and so on so as a teacher when I couldn't get the class attention was because I was boring so that was you know one of the things that I learned in my first year of teaching do not be boring be on point be interesting and be um, be the, the fire starter so this is what I do up to to now um, I like to, to meddle and figure out you know how do we how do we how do we do more? How do we bring more women in in not just cybersecurity but in IT? Um, women are so practical and they're so logical and they come with so many applied skills. What's wrong with us? Why can't we just make it? Other than the fact that traditionally women have not been there and it's a slow process. But what can we do to actually bring more people, more people like us that can work together and um, that can do things together how do we project so one of the ways that um, I posted here because I really like the, the idea and it's really what I do now to this day and I did this all my all my career my 20 year career is uh, encourage all the women that I know whether they be 5 or 55 or 75 to look at technology to look at the careers in technology to think okay well what can you learn about this how do you use this well what do you think is behind it just push them to become inquisitive and just look into uh, STEM careers and my own child is in uh, in a STEM career because uh, at the age of five, he was demonstrating how to use an iPad to a class of teachers. So that was phenomenal to me. Um, and it was probably the, the encouragement that I needed at that point. The other thing that I find so 
important is providing mentorships and support at all levels. Mentorships and support at all levels means a lot of people take a look at us, um, and by us I mean women in a mature age and professional careers, and especially trying to to enter cybersecurity or maintain cybersecurity careers or um, just um, go higher than what we are right now. And they think, well, you know, she's a strong woman and she can do it and look at her and way to go. Being anywhere at any level without support is terrible. So having um, people support you and mentor you at any level is very important. And this is something that's uh, probably my biggest um, thorn right now. And this is what I'm trying to to advocate for and promote and just stand up for and project. So I'm hoping you guys can um, can help me. And yes, Women in Cybersecurity is on my list. Um, and one of the, the things that I think is very important and very practical for any organization, and it has to start from a fire starter, and you can be that one, is uh, establish organizational diversity goals. What does that mean for women? How many women do you project seeing in your organization by the end of 2024? Which is, you know, something that's achievable. It's within the next four years. It's three years. It's doable. So what do you want? Do you want to see five more women? Do you want to see two more women and so on? It's very important to, to push that envelope a little bit. Um, and now talking about initiatives, because I saw Ron was uh, promoting them. YSIS is, again, one of the organizations that I was first introduced to when I was working with uh, stu female students uh, in cybersecurity. And by the way, their name was uh, Cyberpuffs. They were the Powerpuff Girls, and I renamed them Cyberpuffs because people needed to know that Powerpuff Girls really could kick some code. And um, they just kept on, and they are now all graduates and so on. This was a a little while ago, uh, just talking about age freely, right? So um, a lot of these are global. Many of them are in the U.S. I did post the Ladies in Cybersecurity by Def Camp. That's in Romania. That is a really, really strong um, community there. I come from Romania very proudly. Uh, so I do try to keep in touch with what's happening there. But I also can tell you that that's one of the countries that produces the most technical people. So um, it's um, something to look at when they, whenever they have um, conferences and gatherings. And then is the networking. So I'm a tinfoil cap kind of person uh, because I do know enough to know enough. Uh, about systems, about what happens behind the networks and so on. So I try to limit my um, social media contribution to networking, which is for me, LinkedIn and Twitter. So you can find me on either. My contacts are there. But um, mentoring is at the top of my list. So you can see the largest group is actually mentors and mentee women in cybersecurity. Uh, this is really um, probably the most needed right now because one thing that we don't really think about when we're trying to achieve a goal in our careers or switching from a career to another is um, the mental health and emotional health that we have to uh, be able to produce to, to sustain while we're undergoing all this transformation. And that comes while we are still parents and we are still adults and we are still trying to maintain a roof of our heads and so on. So the importance of networking cannot be stressed enough. And I do hope that you share this with everybody, with the world. There's a lot of unknown and what I've found, um, what I found, oh, my slide deck is uh, going to be published I'm going to have it on LinkedIn. I think Diana uh, Initiative will actually have it. So, um, yeah, it's going to be um, published at the end of the of the session. I, mean, I can just send the, the link to the deck as well. But um, just going back to the networking, it is very, very important to 
connect. Not because you want to learn, not because you are at a certain level and you need pointers, but because women need to talk. And that is a reality. We need to vent. We need, this is how we process our um, frustrations, our fears, our curiosity. This is how we learn. This is how we share. This is just sharing, just processing, talking. This is the most important thing. Um, that, that we probably have the most important resource. And the other thing is when you're lost, then you will get lost because at some point in any woman's life, especially when we turn 40 and going up, with our bodies changing, our mind is changing, and then there will be times when you will need help. And there are places out there that do help you, women who need that kind of help. They help you refocus, they help you um, reassess. They help you just get yourself ready and present yourself and become confident. So this is just one example. There's so many out there. I'm just going to uh, share a board, a comment board. I already put the link in. Um, so it's um, please share if you know of these because so many of us need them. And just just think about um, you know how how can you uh, support someone if you're in a good place and you've been through some some mentoring or been through some helping just pay it forward this is probably how we can build the fastest so this is the um, the information the the board I'm just gonna go ahead and repost the board for you I had posted it at the the very beginning it may not be there. It is a, um, bear with me while I find it. There we go. Ah, I see some of you are already sharing. Thank you so much. This is phenomenal. I'm just going to reshare this board uh, just for everybody to have access to it. Here it is right here. Um, these are all of the, the resources. I apologize for the technical delay and uh, my technical difficulties. I guess you're not a um, you're not a a person in tech if you don't experience some some issues yourself. But uh, feel free to ask questions. I'm gonna just uh, pass it on to uh, Ron if um, if you want to take uh, take over, Ron, and I will make sure that I post the the deck as well and Anna yes you're right women who empower women are life changers I want to say women who are near women are life changers sometimes you can't empower sometimes you just need to be there and listen and just cry and um, just not even give advice sometimes you just need to be there so I just want to leave you with with that I do hope that um, I get in touch with many of you. I don't know. I have um, I've watched you just you know responding and interacting and so on. I am so blind. I am very visual. I would love to be somewhere where I can see you and interact with you, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait until the next time. So if you see me ever, I'm super approachable. Uh, I may not seem it because. Uh, at my age, in my career, uh, sometimes concentration shows on my face. But if you see me anywhere, just come by and just say hi and talk to me. Um, this, is, this is the most important thing for me, just connecting with you.